NGSS, with project-based learning, has inspired shifts in teaching and learning. As a result, students are able to learn science by engaging with more dimensions than the traditional science classroom. So what do we already know about these red-winged blackbirds from our activities this morning? NGSS has three dimensions and project-based learning, also known as PBL, provides real-world contexts and meaningful science problems in which students collaboratively construct explanations for what they have observed. They're probably in their nest protecting their um, eggs. Students are expected to work together and learn from each other as well as from the teacher. Okay, so this is a time to share an idea that you had or an idea that you read or somebody else had. And right now you're going to use evidence, your experience to explain why you think that. Lessons built around the NGSS ask students to use science ideas and practices. After you observe, something scientists do is they use evidence. And today, most of the evidence we're going to use is our experience. But there's other forms of evidence. Can somebody think of a different form of evidence besides your experience? Students are able to flourish in science because they have many avenues for success. The internet. The internet. Lily. From a book. From a book. And today most of the evidence will be from experience. In earlier videos, the fourth grade red-winged blackbird unit engaged James and Ellen in myriad ways. We watched James artistically and creatively delve into the world of hard science. Because I saw a few in the field, but then when I got to A3, I noticed that there was tons more birds there and we watched Ellen move beyond her comfort zone and take risks. And then a sign to show that I'm friendly and I want to work with others is just like go ask them if they want to do something fun with me or, you know, play. In this video, we meet Sydney. She's a talented and gifted young lady. She finds her niche in the community as the unit unfolds and she fully participates in knowledge building with her peers. Do you have any questions you want to find out about Sydney? Yeah. Um, I want to know if the ivory-billed woodpecker is extinct or not because they don't really know yet. And I also want to know how birds fly or how they maybe go on their, some birds migrate and I wonder where, how they know where they're going and stuff like that. Who can figure out where the marsh is? Over the course of the lesson, Sydney flourishes and becomes a leader in the interactive tasks of investigation, sense-making, and data interpretation and design. Hey ladies, come take a look here. I think it's a falling nest because it's all twigged up and the twigs are like all twisted together to make a cup shape. Hey so scientists, think, what do we think this means? I think, I think, I think the eggs already had. It was because the nest got older and the baby only grew up in it and then it was just left over so it fell down. Sydney is a reader. She reads several grade levels above fourth grade. Oh, what kinds of things do you like to read about? I like to read about cats and I like to read Warriors, which is a book series. She is curious about science and she often looks up questions on her own at home. But with writing, she sometimes struggles because she needs time to organize her thoughts and present them coherently. Puff up their feathers when they call. The males always puff up their feathers when they call to each other. Maybe to say this is my area, this is my nest and territory. Some of the male red-winged blackbirds puff up their feathers when they sing their normal song. Maybe to attract females or to say this is my territory. Because she is a divergent thinker, Sydney sometimes stands out from her peers who find her quirky. In a traditional science classroom, Sydney's divergent thinking might get her off track. But the nature of PBL is communal learning. In NGSS, students are expected to figure things out on their own. Combined together, these allow Sydney to stretch herself socially. She uses her curiosity, independent thinking, and deep knowledge as a strength. I think the bird has those markings because they can know who's who in their group or territories. And I've had experience when I see birds migrate and they get lost, but then they always find their group again. So I think that may work like that way. Sydney was also a key player when it came to making observations in the marsh and coming up with explanations for the social behavior of the birds. She worked with other students to make sense of the phenomenon that social behavior and structural adaptations of the red-winged blackbird 
help it to survive. The males are calling to each other because one just went eat and another one just replied eat. And why do you think they're doing that? Maybe because they're trying to say this in my area and you're kind of getting close with your territory. Yeah. Or maybe they want help from each other. When one of the red-winged blackbird hides its epaulets, maybe to camouflage. Throughout the unit, you will notice how the phenomena and related design problem require group sense making. Where? About eye level. Where is it? it oh, like I see now. Juvenile markings. Sydney, what makes you say that? Because it has this little brown dot on its head. Blackbirds have different markings like epaulets. Some have red, some have orange, and some have yellow. Well, that's a good question. What do you think that means? Why do you suppose that it's that yeah. way? Maybe the females can identify their mates by different colors. Or maybe the babies will freak out if it doesn't have a different marking or they don't know that's a predator. The PBL learning design allows Sydney to be a leader, not because she has high social status, but because she has so much to offer the group in making connections among ideas. This promotes shared understanding. This is a symbol that you'll tape on your hand if you need space, and then this is a symbol you'll tape on your hand if you're happy and you want more friends, so that way that you can let others know that you're happy or you're sad. Students had to work in pairs to engineer a trait useful in social communication. The trait could be used to communicate either territorial behavior or social behavior. Kind of a bad expression phrase. That means I want to be by myself. And when I have a like happy expression, I want to um, be with others. I'm looking for tape and some symbols that I could probably draw on my. It's more of like I'm making a hand, little badge that you could put on. So I'm looking for tape and maybe some little paper squares. And I found some stickers. The students have already figured out that the social sign of the hidden epaulette indicates a willingness to share resources. I've got happy signals and um, I want space signal and that way I can just show my hands like this to people and they'll understand how I feel. Sydney was confident and used her great ideas for a design solution to build relationships. I'd say I'm happy. The task allowed Sydney to stretch herself in another way she needed to organize her thoughts coherently for the presentation. Who has one that they're ready to share? I saw a lot of great examples. Bailey, why don't you come on down, nice and loud, and tell us what each one is for, what it represents, and how people will know. This side is when I'm friendly and when I'm ready to play, and then this side is when I need my space and to be left alone. Anyone else have one they want to share? Sydney, go ahead. This one means I'm happy and then I'm ready to play. And this one means I want my space for a little bit. And how do people know which one to respond to since you have them on both hands? I will be holding up my wrist when I'm happy on this hand. And also when I'm mad, I can go with this one. Throughout the unit, Sydney and her classmates learned a valuable lesson about what it means to be a scientist. They learned that science is about working with others and sharing ideas. In this unit, because of the various dimensions for learning, Sydney understood that she has an important role to play in the classroom community. Sydney is valuable to the group, especially because she thinks independently. Would you think that you'd be interested in being a scientist when you grow up? Yeah, I really want to be. A, I probably would be a bird scientist. Do you know what a bird scientist is called? An ornithologist. <laughs> All right, great job. A deep, out of the box thinker. Sydney was familiar with a lot of relevant science ideas coming into the unit, and she worked with other students to build a deeper, shared understanding.